Hey guys, it is Tyler here back once again with another Assassin's Creed video. Today, I wanted to talk again about Assassin's Creed Origins and more specifically Aya or Amunet. I said back in December when I released my review for the game that I wanted to make separate videos in the future breaking down in more detail each of the things that I did and did not like about the game. So this Aya video made sense for me to start as it is a less obvious topic for some people and I thought an interesting talking point overall. Now let me be clear, I don't actually dislike Aya as a character. I just feel as though she was totally mishandled in the game and in this video I want to talk about the several major reasons why that is. To give some context if someone watching this video doesn't know, Aya, later known as Amunet, is the wife of AC Origins main protagonist, Bayek of Siwa, and is one of the three playable characters throughout the main story, the others being obviously Bayek and the modern day's Layla Hassan. Aya's story is split throughout the main game in Origins, giving us several naval missions as she attempts to help build Queen Cleopatra's army to help her take the throne. Aya is totally devoted to Cleopatra throughout the story and sacrifices much of her relationship with Bayek to help Cleopatra in her conquests. Aya in the end also helps construct the Assassin Order alongside Bayek as they go their separate ways when Aya goes to hunt down Caesar in Rome after Cleopatra's betrayal of her and Bayek. She then rebirths herself as a hidden one, known as Amunet, leaving her past life as Aya behind, symbolically of course. So let's start talking about why I think Aya's character was just unlikable in the way she was executed in Assassin's Creed Origins. Firstly, Aya's devotion to Cleopatra doesn't make any sense. Right from the start of the game, Bayek and her are separated after the death of their son, and they're on a mission to hunt down and kill the men responsible. Aya does so by serving Cleopatra and using that position to help in that search. However, it is clear from the first few interactions between Bayek and herself that Aya is completely devoted to Cleopatra first and her ambitions. This plot point wouldn't be an issue though if Cleopatra was portrayed at all like a leader worth following. Before seeing Cleopatra for the first time, we hear Aya gush over how great and wonderful she is. So you expect her to be a major strong figure. However, this just isn't the case. The first interaction to Cleopatra in the game has Bayek meet her at one of her parties, where she talks about how she'll fuck anyone that wants to as long as they are willing to be executed the next morning. I don't know about you, but that doesn't really make me think she was any sort of leader worth following. If you were to just tell me that scene without any context, it sounds more like some Charles Manton shit if I'm totally honest. Bayek seems to think a similar thing as well and pretty much looks at Aya, who's like, she's great, right? Bayek should have said something like, no, obviously she's a self-indulgent lunatic, what are you thinking following her? But that doesn't happen, and as the story continues, we see Cleopatra send Bayek and Aya on several wild goose chases that benefit her with no real assurance it will lead Bayek and Aya to their main goals. Bayek sees through Cleopatra and points it out to Aya on many occasions but Aya dismisses this and continues to go along with Cleopatra's plans, urging Bayek to do the same. It was just so infuriating to see this character you were supposed to care about be clearly led astray and totally blind to the idiocy of her own position as a devoted servant to Cleopatra. And as anyone with a brain suspected, Cleopatra eventually betrayed them all as soon as she got what she wanted from Aya, who was seemingly surprised by all this. Seriously. The continued support of Cleopatra through the game led not only to players scratching their heads, but also to story tensions in the relationship between Aya and Bayek. Which was another major reason I just personally didn't like Aya in the game. I didn't trust her. This is a behavioural thing in relationships with people, where you can tell that one person's intentions are more pure and the other has an alternative objective, but uses that trust in the relationship to manipulate the other person. You see it in other games, like Uncharted 4, with Nate and Sam. Nate would do anything for his brother, and Sam used that to manipulate Nate to help him in his schemes. I saw this again in Aya's behaviour from the start when I saw her first meeting with Bayek. It doesn't mean the other person doesn't care about them. Does Aya love Bayek? Absolutely. 
but Baik's first priority was to be with Aya. And Aya had other priorities first, but used Baik to help her achieve those goals, mainly helping Cleopatra. She said her heart was with Baik to him, but that you could tell was just a little disingenuous. I didn't trust her from the start, and up until the end of the game I was given no reason to believe that feeling was wrong. In fact, it was proven. Did it make Aya a horrible person? No, it, it did make her human. Does it make her story bad? N not necessarily. Aya's story was a very human one. It was one of a hurt and flawed individual. Nothing wrong with that on the surface. But since the player is most attached to Bayek, my lack of trust made me wary of her. I was made to feel like she was only going to hurt Bayek in the end and didn't care about him as much as he did her. It doesn't make her story bad, it just makes her sort of unlikable. And when it comes down to it, are any of these points I've stated reasons to think Aya's story is stupid or poorly executed? Well, I do think so, but if she was simply just a side character, it probably wouldn't be as big of an issue. But Aya is playable. We had to spend time with her. She has quite a few missions, including took up the last hour or so of the game's main story. Aya's missions felt kind of like a forced gameplay feature to include both naval gameplay and a character Ubisoft were desperate to make us care about. I don't know whether it's to sell comic books later on, I don't know. Well, I didn't care about her. Though the naval was a good novelty for about 10 minutes, it quickly became clear that there was as much substance to this gameplay mechanic as there was sense to playing as Aya. Very, very little. There could have been many better ways to play as Aya, but we were given subpar missions in a story arc no one cared about. Though her story did come full circle when she killed Caesar and helped start the assassin order with Bayek. But was that enough? Sure, she redeemed her idiotic actions of the past 49 hours of the story within the last hour, but they made it the ending and treated her and it as the main story arc of the game in the end, which it wasn't and it shouldn't have been leaving Bayek in Egypt to just, I don't know, read a letter in the final scene. It felt kind of like a kick in the gut, like the game was saying, see, she redeemed herself, who's Bayek again? Like, no. Now yes, Aya's story certainly did come full circle as I said, and she eventually saw the error of her ways, but does that make her a good character in Origins? Does that excuse her idiotic plot and nonsensical devotion to a cult-type leader in Cleopatra? No, in my mind it doesn't. It still means her missions in the game are boring and are tossed in, when they could have been great. Wouldn't it instead have been better to play as Aya assassinating the other members of the Order of the Ancients, and see how she deals with the people that killed her son? Run her story parallel with the main protagonist in Bayek, see how they compare, see how you can connect to the two of them in different ways under the same circumstances, rather than just have Aya doing Cleopatra's random errands. It's not simply that her character arc is stupid, but she as a playable character is totally misused by the development team, because there is way more depth in Aya that could have been explored, but wasn't. She seemed purposefully made to look dumb and untrustworthy until the last five minutes of the game, in which all of a sudden we're supposed to care about her, it just doesn't make sense when you really look at it. Don't get me wrong, Aya has plenty of good moments and points in Assassin's Creed Origins. I only mean to point out the obvious and glaring flaws within the game, but I actually liked her reveal to be Amunet the whole time. I thought her role in building the Order alongside Bayek made a lot of sense. She pulled Bayek away from the past and made him look into the future. It seemed unlikely to me that one man could have built the Order alone. It needed to be multiple people with conflicting ideals and goals in mind that help construct an order that is so iconic and prolific as the Assassins. Aya, as Amunet, also made a great appearance in the Hidden Ones DLC. She was devoted to a new role as a Hidden One, and you know she is being genuine about that at this point. While also a small part of her is certainly still drawn to Bayek, as of course the two will always have love for one another. But now there is no miscommunication about where they stand with each other. There is that honesty which made it easier to see her as a faithful and trustworthy ally. Ultimately, Aya's biggest issues as a character in Assassin's Creed Origins come not from who she is as a character, 
but what the writers chose to show us of her story. If you look deeper into her story, there is so much complexity in there with books and extended media that show us this. But in the game, they had us play unimportant bits that made her look a fool and untrustworthy in a relationship with Black. So, ladies and gentlemen, those are the reasons that I think Aya's use in Assassin's Creed Origins was kind of stupid and ill-advised. I do not think she's a horrible character by any means. Overall, I actually think she's a good and complex character, but just poorly handled overall that made her unlikable within the major story of the game. Anyway guys, thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. Thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you disagree with me, that's fine too. I'd love to see some great discussions in the comment section below, whether you agree or disagree with the points I made in this video. Anyway guys, thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time.